Wow. Talk about some healthy ass roots. Root porn, baby. I am growing lettuce in a milk jug using hydroponics. And I'm going to show you guys how to do it. Let's go. What's going on, my plant peoples? I am the ADHD gardener where I use gardening, houseplants, and humor as a form of mental health therapy. And I'm growing lettuce in a milk jug, bro. In a milk jug with just water. Isn't that awesome? Now you're probably asking yourself, what is hydroponics? Hydroponics essentially is growing plants inside of just water. There's no soil involved. There is no mess involved, really. It's just water. Now, but with typical hydroponics, you're actually gonna be using a bubbler source which means you want to be inserting oxygen into the water because that is exactly how the plant is going to be surviving and get its oxygen. Now, normally in hydroponics, if you do not have a bubbler or provide oxygen inside of that water source that you have already there, your plants will rot and die. They will die. They need oxygen in order to live. Now, the beauty about crack key method and why it works without a bubbler on its own is because as the roots start to develop or grow inside of that water, the roots will suck up automatically the water that's inside or where it's sitting at. And then over time, the water that's in there will actually decrease lower and lower. Now, as the water level is dropping lower and lower in the, you know, in the milk jug, the roots get stronger and they get longer. So they'll follow the water as it goes down. Now, over time, you'll have a gap you know, inside of the milk jug that is going to be air, and that's exactly where the roots are gonna be getting the oxygen from. The leftover gaps in space inside of your milk jugs, that is where the oxygen is at, and that's how the roots are gonna suck up the oxygen. Therefore, not needing a bubbler, no oxygen replacement or inside of the water because it's getting it from the air. So you have the top ends of the roots exposed to the air over time, and then you still have the lower bottom of the roots sucking up the water it's a beautiful thing yo it's so it's, it's crazy i've actually it's so good i've actually started implementing that it with my house plants because i was trying to figure out how in the world could you get house plants in just water how in the world because every time i did it it was it would rot and it would die so i was thinking damn yo if this works why wouldn't it work on my plants so right now, actually in my house, I have a pothos, a snake plant, and a monstera in crack key in the house. I have not exactly figured out the nutrient requirements for those, so that's an experiment. However, when it comes to the crack key method, there is actually, it kind of, kind of comes with a recipe if you want to call it that. It already has, or someone, the guy that came up with the crack key method, something crack key, I forget what it is called, I'll put them right up here. He actually came up with this method. Of course, when he first started, he was uh, testing them out in milk jugs, and that was the beauty of it. But then you can actually, you know, upscale the size, and you don't have to do it just in milk jugs. You can go a lot larger, storage bins, larger setups. I'm gonna be doing that in the summertime, but for now, I just wanted to experiment with the milk jug. Now, in his method, when he's, you know, when he came up with this, he actually came up with the fertilizer. Now, the fertilizer is called Master Blend. Well, at least that's what he called it, the Master Blend. Now, that Master Blend actually has three components in it. One of them is going to be Epsom salt. The other one is going to be calcium nitrate. And then the other one is the one that is called Master Blend. Now, those three are the ones that you combine together using his specifications on how to do them. It has to be mixed a certain way, certain grams, certain teaspoons, in accordance to how many gallons of water you're actually doing this with. The nutrient recipe for the water, actually, it was a little... did set it up for you for a five gallon container. These are actually one gallon containers, so you're gonna have to do some math. You're gonna have to bust out your calculator and do some you know, calculations on this kind of type of math. That's what I did. Or the other way is you can just actually just um, fill up a five gallon bucket. 
That's exactly what I did. I filled up a five gallon bucket. Being that I have five individual one gallon milk jugs, I could just mix it all together and then put the water inside of these in, you know, individual milk jugs. This is the fertilizer mix that you're gonna be using inside of those containers. You can't just use regular any old fertilizer. I mean, I guess you could technically, but that's for another video and further experimentation. But right now I am going by what you're supposed to do in the beginning. Now, when you're first learning about it, they are going to mention master blend. Now the master blend is actually a 14, 18, 38. Now, what do those numbers mean anyway? NPK. Those are the three main nutrients that your plant needs for survival, for growth, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Those three main elements are needed for your plant. Now you could buy these nutrients separately or you can get them all together in one pack. Now, one of them is gonna be calcium nitrate. The other one is going to be Epsom salt. And the other one is gonna be the master blend. Now what I have here is actually a milk jug that I painted completely black. Now you don't have to paint it black. You can actually just cover it with aluminum foil. You have to cover it just so no sunlight can get inside of the milk jug. What will happen is the sun over time will start to develop algae in the water. It'll start to get yucky and you don't want that at all. So you're gonna cover your milk jugs right off the rip. You can do this before or after you cut an opening of the hole. What I'm using right here is actually neck cups. Now these are the three inch neck cups because I'm only growing lettuce in this one. If you want a larger plant, like a tomato or a pepper, you may have to upsize or upgrade the size of the neck cups. Now you're gonna cut a hole around the gallon, the milk jug, whatever you're using, so that neck cup can fit snugly on top. After you cut it, you're gonna rest that neck cup right inside of that container. Now you want it flush on top. You don't want anything exposed, no light exposed inside of the, you know, inside of the milk jug. Now I made the mistake of accidentally cutting open a hole too big for the milk jug. So I actually had to tape it up just so I can make sure that no sun is actually getting into the container. Now also I'm using LECA balls. Now when it comes to the medium that you're putting inside of the neck cup, that is normally rock wool. You can also use, uh, I believe people said, if not rock wool, you can use cocoa core. Um, I don't know about peat moss because it gets all up in the water. But I guess, I don't know, if it was up to me, I would not do peat moss. I would do cocoa core because it's a lot more fibrousy. Rock wool, or I'm using LECA balls. I mean, you don't have to use the LECA balls, but that's just exactly what I had in my possession at the time. Now the LECA balls, it did work as you can see, it was, it was obviously effective, but I did notice that it was, um, was kind of hard to stabilize the, the lettuce plant in itself. Only when it got bigger did it start to like, you know, stop moving around so much and it did stabilize. So LECA balls did work, but mm, I mean, it did give me a little bit of issues just with stabilizing the plant, but it, did it really harm it? No, it really didn't. Okay, I have a little cup here. I've already teared this out, so there is technically no weight on this right now. Close enough for government work. All right, there we go. We got 12.05, ah, 0.04, that's good enough. I'm gonna use that, and I'm gonna put that in my water. Of course, this would definitely work better with a stick that's long enough to reach into a five gallon bucket. That would be a lot nicer. And of course, we make shift and do stuff that's, you know, this is actually rainwater that I have. I have been collecting rainwater over the winter and especially allowing a lot of that snow and ice to melt inside of buckets. So this is all rainwater, actually, except for one gallon. One gallon of water has actually come from my faucet. So we're gonna work with that. Now that we have that in the water, whoa, I didn't know that that was actually gonna turn it yellow like that. Tear that out, we put this back. Now this is gonna tell us, we already added the 12 grams, so now we're gonna add six grams of magnesium sulfate. Actually, hold up. We can add, oh yeah, yeah, six grams of magnesium sulfate. Man, I'm getting good at this measuring, yo. Oh my gosh. 
What? Okay. All right, I got my six grams of magnesium sulfite right there, and it is going into the buckets. Okay, now we mix, mix, mix. I hope my cats stay away from this water. Mix, mix, mix. All right. Now we got calcium. I believe this is 12 grams also. Yes, calcium nitrate, five gallons, of course. We're gonna add 12 grams of that. Okay, now that calcium nitrate is going in to the water. And I have here some dino kale and lettuce, well, butter crunch lettuce. I'm gonna try this out with just lettuce because I know the dino crunch is gonna get way too big. Being that this is just cocoa core and vermiculite, it's gonna be a lot easier to transfer these into the milk jugs. I want the biggest and I want the best ones. All right, it may be a little hard in the beginning to get this situated in the LECA, so I'm gonna dump some out and then leave it in here and then fill it back up with some more LECA balls. There we go, look how cute! Look how cute this is! I have them under these grow lights. However, I don't think that they're that strong, but I'm also thinking that it's this type or you know, the specific type of lettuce that I have here that looks a little stringy on the beginning because I have seen this before when it first started growing, you know, in the, my little seedling trays. Now I brought them outside to my greenhouse. Normally you would not have to do that if you have grow lights inside. I did have grow lights, it's just that I need more space. I don't know what's up with that one. I'm not sure, I don't know if that was just a plant defect in itself, or was it the fact that, you know, some spaces, I have tape here, as you see, because I cut that hole way too big. So I try to tape it up. I don't know if that was the problem. Now I have one dying leaf, but I wanna say that's nothing really, because the plant in itself looks amazing. I mean, this looks really good. Let's see what the root system, whoa! Talk about root porn. Oh my gosh. Technically, if you leave them for too long, they will either bolt or they'll get bitter. So you don't really necessarily want them in the state. However, I'm gonna be giving them to my chickens and I'm sure my chickens will appreciate a bunch of fresh lettuce. I don't know why this one didn't work out. I mean, it's growing, but there has to be something wrong with either that particular plant itself or what? Hold up. Oh, no, 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 no. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Is that a mealy bug? All right, that's just tape because it was open, but let me, let's look underneath. I mean, it had some good roots in there. I don't know. Wow. Talk about some healthy ass roots. Root porn, baby. Whoa, that is nice. Let's actually look inside of here. Oh, it just looks like regular liquid in there. No problem. Now it looks like that on the bottom. That's because of the paint has worn off, but it still has about half a gallon left in this milk jug. Half a gallon, that is a lot of water. I had these milk jugs inside of my house under a grow light but I decided to bring them outdoors because of course I'm always making space inside of my house. But when I am bringing them outside, I can leave them out in the open air. However, you have to be careful as to, you know, if it rains 
and any water gets inside of the container. It's going to ruin the ratio of the nutrients, and I don't really know. Well, basically, you just don't want anything going inside of the container. You don't want to contaminate what you already have here. So you can put it in your greenhouse. You can have it under, you know, a shade of something else. So long as no water can get inside of the plant, really. So that's why I moved it to my greenhouse. It gets the lights, but no rain is going to be coming in the container. I hope you enjoyed this video and you really get your hands on a milk jug and a neck cup and these nutrients. I'm going to go post them down in the description below if you want to go check out where you can buy them and uh, really try it out. I think I'm going to be using this method for a long time because I, I really like the fact that there's no soil involved. And it was really easy. I mean, it was basically like a set it and forget it. I set it up in the water and you just kind of like let it go as so long as you're providing the, you know, the sunlight or the water. If you did enjoy this video and you want to show me some love, then don't forget to smash that like button. I really appreciate it. Also, if you haven't already, then consider subscribing. I drop a video every week and then some in between. And last but not least, you can catch me on Facebook and Instagram. I'm on there all the time. You can drop me a message. I post a bunch of funny memes, DIY projects, behind the scenes. And every now and then, a girl has got to vent. So it'd be getting personal up in there. So until the next episode, you guys, you and me both are going to be growing our happiness one plant at a time, one day at a time. And I'll check you out in the next episode. Until then, peace and love.